Okay, so today we're going to talk about hydration. And I would suggest that this is a really, really important topic. Because nothing in the body works properly without proper hydration. Okay? So, we could look at any aspect of our being, how the mind works. It's, it's been said, in fact, that if there's as little as one or two percent dehydration, your, your brain doesn't work very well. And notice that medicine thinks that most people are only a maximum of two or three percent dehydrated. But that's because they're seeing the same people over and over again, right? Average people eating an average diet. Okay, and those people are going to be dehydrated. So they've never seen how hydrated some can, someone can actually be. They have no idea what's possible. But science is clear just how critically important being fully hydrated is, even though they don't even know what that looks like. So, first of all, how do we get dehydrated? You know, I, I really had my eyes opened um, as the importance of hydration when I came across a book, probably more than 20 years ago now, called Your Body's Many Cries for Water. Anyone know it? Um, I came across this book. I had to read it because I grew up in the 60s and 70s, and this book was written by Dr. Batman. He's one of my heroes, Batman. Um, the author's name is Batman Gelage, uh, Iranian descent. No one could pronounce his name, so everyone called him Dr. Batman. And Batman was talking about how dehydration played such a huge role. And what he was doing, what he'd been doing for 20 years, was having his, his patients follow a specific protocol. He was an MD. And they would follow a specific protocol, which involved drinking copious amounts of water and consuming a little bit of salt each time. Because the salt forced the body to hold water. And then eventually the osmotic pressure would push it into the cells. Let me ask you a question before I go any further. Do you think people are dehydrated because they're not consuming enough salt? What do you think? No, so, no. in typical medical fashion, what he was doing was looking at a way to treat a symptom. Can everyone see that? Yes. He didn't address the underlying cause. In fact, as far as I know, he never even publicly asked the question, why are people dehydrated? He didn't ask that question. Okay, he, he simply worked with people to address the symptoms of the, of the dehydration. And I read the book, and there, you know, people with a whole range of different issues saw <coughs> enormous changes in how they felt decreasing of their symptoms by getting, using this protocol, getting more water into their bodies. But I looked at this and thought, okay, but what's, what's causing the problem? How do we address the underlying issue, right? What's causing the underlying problem? Well, let's take a look, first of all, at what happens in nature. Animals in nature, let's see, let's just, let's, for, for the moment, let's divide animals into two broad categories, okay? We've got animals that eat animals, primarily, and we've got animals that eat plants. If animals are eating plants, whether it's, Leaves, roots, shoots, fruit. What's true is that they're consuming mostly what? Water. Water. All these things are mostly water. How about animals that consume animals? What does a carnivore do? What does a wolf do? Or a fox when it, when it kills its prey? What's, how do they normally kill their prey? They bite the jugular. They bite through the jugular vein, which feeds the brain. And I'm sure, just like our, you know, our brains are a small percentage of our body, but get an inordinate percentage of blood flow. A lot of blood's going this way. Same with the animals. They blight, bite through the jugular vein. They drink all the blood. Then they tear them open, eat the water-rich internal organs. Okay, then they eat the flesh. Okay, so animals that eat animals are consuming mostly what? 
Water. Now let's look at people. Okay. What what do people consume? What what what's what's typical where you're from in the morning? First meal of the day. What do people consume? Eggs. 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 Toast. Toast. Bacon. Dry cereal. Bread. 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 How much water is in these things? Three percent. Very very little. Very little. Okay, and they're often accompanied by tea, coffee, which are what? Diuretics. They're taking water out of the body. Okay? Most of what most people eat. Now, as I probably shared with you before, or not so long ago, a study said in North America, the average person now gets over 61% of their calories from ultra-processed foods. Ultra-processed foods. Okay, this is stuff that comes in cellophane packages. You'll find it at the rack next to the cash register at the gas station. You know, place the 7-Eleven, stuff like that. This is what people are, where people are getting most of their calories now. Is through eating things like this. Do those things contain any significant amount of water? What do you think? Mm -hmm. Absolutely not. So, When you eat food like that, that doesn't have enough water, how does it get through your body? It doesn't. Well, some of it doesn't. It doesn't all get stuck. I mean, people do have bowel movements, but some of it's not getting through. But in order to get it through, your body has to be giving it water, has to be putting water into your digestive tract. In the transverse colon, which runs across the center of your belly, we're intended to absorb water from food. So you eat watermelon. You eat mangoes, you eat pineapple, you eat any of these things that we're going to feed you. And what happens is there's a lot of water in the food. That goes all the way through your digestive tract, which is roughly 32 feet from one end to the other, until it gets the transverse colon. The last couple of feet before it exits the body, the body says, okay, now that we have had the water present to help this stuff move through the system, now that it's almost out, let's, let's capture all that perfect water <laughs> so that only what stays in is what needs to be there to move it out of the body. Does that make sense? Your body doesn't want to waste any of this perfect water, right? So then it recaptures the water. What exits your body is 75% water. Now think about that. It's 75% water, stool, when it exits your body. How many of you have had a meal of bananas and felt like you needed to drink some water? You don't have this experience? Raise your hand if you've had this experience. It's pretty common. Okay? Why? Fruit. Why would you need water? Well, bananas are about 73% water. Stool is 75% water. What does that mean? It means you're losing a little bit of water when you eat a meal of bananas. Can you see that? What do you think happens if you're eating toast? You need that tea. Or know. granola, you know, dry, completely dry material. You need a little you're little losing water. a lot of water, right? In fact, I, my, my favorite graphic example of this, I apologize, some of you have heard this before, but I love it. Right? Everyone's had corn chips? Yeah? Yes. Mm -hmm. When they come out of your body, are they as dry as when they went in? You better hope not. Okay? Be pretty uncomfortable if they were. They're going in completely dry, not completely dry. I'm, I'm, it's not true. The truth is they're 2% water. I researched it. 2%. When they come out of your body, 75%. Where'd the water come from? Your body. Your body. This is how people get dehydrated. Does this make sense? Yes. Mm -hmm. Now, can't you just drink enough water to make up the difference? It's really difficult to do. I've, I've played with the numbers. We can, we'll can, we do it here quickly. I don't want to spend too much time on this. And I'm making the numbers up. But just to give you an example. First of all, let's say you eat a meal of watermelon. Okay? I, I can easily eat two kilos of watermelon. Right, other fruit eaters here, does that sound reasonable to you? Reasonable to you? 
Gazelle, you over there? Reasonable to you? Yeah. Two kilos, no big deal, right? How much was that in a pound? That's, that's four and a half pounds. Okay? Four and a half pounds of watermelon, no problem. Kilos is useful, though, because a kilo, a, a liter of water weighs a kilo. Okay? So, watermelons, 92% water. That means if you're eating two kilos of watermelon, you're getting nearly two liters of water. 1.8 liters of water, that meal. Everyone with me so far? Mm -hmm. Okay. And that water is perfect. It's different than water we drink. Different how? Water's water, I've been told. I've been told you're an idiot, water's water. Okay. What's, what differentiates one source of water from another? Not talking about cleanliness or minerals. It's actually structurally different. It's different because water, H2O, is a water molecule. Can anyone show me a water molecule? It'd be hard to do because water molecules are always clustered together. A drop of water is many water molecules clustered together. Show me one. You can't do it. The water in fruit is five to six molecules clustered together. The water that you drink is typically going to be 25 to 35 molecules clustered together. In order for your body to take the molecules apart, it has to separate the molecules, the clusters first. Can you see how it might be easier to break up five and six molecule clusters than 25 and 35 molecule clusters? It's been said that the water in our food, our perfect foods, is five to 10 times easier for the body to assimilate than the water we drink. This may help some of you understand how I can get by drinking two or three glasses a week. Okay? Because once your body's clean, you've gotten the old stuff out, which is sitting there like a giant sponge. Once that stuff's out of your system, you don't need much water. Now, by the way, a lot of people, there's a lot of people who live on a fruit-based diet who drink very little water. Unfortunately for them, almost all the ones we've measured here have been severely dehydrated. They think they're getting all the water they need from their food, but it's not getting into their cells. Okay, this is what happens. You have to get the, the garbage out of the body first. Otherwise, it's going to absorb the water. So no matter what you're eating, you have to be drinking water until you get your system clean. Okay, but let's say, so you're eating, let's say you eat three meals a day, watermelon, things like it, right? So 1.8 times three is 5.4. Let's, let's say not everything has as much water as the watermelon. It's five liters a day you're getting from your food. You with me so far? Five liters a day you're getting from your food if you're eating three meals a day of fruit. But let's say you're not eating three meals a day of fruit. Instead, you're eating three meals a day of Corn chips, cereal, and toast, the stuff that people eat. Did you hear about the, the guy, the young boy, who just went blind and lost his hearing in North America? Turns out he'd been living on only chips and white bread. He was like 12. That's all he, that's all he ate. I, I, his parents, I think, should be in prison. Yeah. Yeah. But that's all he was eating. Okay, doctors can't figure out what happened. Eat 100% toxic crap and there's going to be some negative implications. Okay, So imagine eating a diet that was completely devoid of water. Hard to do, but imagine that. How, how short in water would you be every day? Remember, the, watermelon, the, the fruit meals had five liters. Now you're eating stuff that contains no water. How short in water are you? Are you five liters short? No. How much? Twenty-five liters. Seventy-five percent of five liters. You're just making shit up. No, because Okay. First of all, you're not getting the five liters of water. So you're, five, you're starting out five liters short. 
But all the dry food you're eating, which needs to go through your system, how much water does it require to move that stuff through your system? That's taking water from your body. Can you see that? I don't know how much water it needs, but it depends on, the, on the, the volume, the mass of the food you're eating. How much, how much of that dry food would someone eat in a day? Two kilos? One? One and a half? Okay, you're going to be losing a bunch of water too. Can everyone see that? In addition to what you're taking in, you're losing water too. So you're not five liters short. Maybe you're eight liters short or 10. And we're going to forget for a second about the fact that it's five to 10 times easier, they say, to assimilate the water from the fruit. How many of you are having a hard time getting five or six liters of water in? While you're here doing nothing, with nothing else you need to do, what do you think happens when you go home and you've got to work and do all, you know, live your whole life as well, and now you're not five liters, you don't need five liters a day, you need eight at least. A liter is just a tiny bit bigger than a quart. Okay, there's, there's 32 ounces in a quart and 33 point something ounces in a liter. That's from the fruit meals, and then you're losing water by eating the dry food. So you're not getting that water, and you're losing water on top of that, processing the dry stuff through your system. Can everyone understand what I'm saying? Yes. Yeah. So if, if you're now needing to drink eight liters of water to make it up from not eating properly. And, and remember, there's a limit to how much your body can process at one time. You drink it too fast, are you getting any benefit from it? No. Runs right through you. How, how can you possibly get this much water into if you can't do it now while you have nothing else to do? Now, consider the fact that they say it's five to 10 times harder. If it were five times harder and you're short eight liters of perfect water, you now need to drink 40 liters a day. Which, by the way, is a little bit problematic given that your two healthy kidneys can process a maximum of one liter per hour. You can't take in more than 24 liters a day, and that's if you never sleep and you have perfect kidney function. What if it's only two times harder to get the water into your body. You still need to drink 16 liters a day. Is that gonna happen? Th this is why every single person we measure, we've measured more than 3,000 people's level of hydration in 14 years. There have been two other people close to well hydrated out of thousands of people. No matter what they're eating. Okay, can you see the issue here? And it's critically important. Okay, let me tell you a quick story. About 12 years ago, a woman I knew was moving out of the country, had adopted a cat, a street cat she'd found, and needed to find a home for it. We weren't here, it was another, another place, another cat. I agreed to take this cat. And she said to me, he gets half a can of wet food and a big bowl of dry food every day. And she gave me the stuff. And I just did what she said. And this cat looked like Blanquito. Everyone know Blanquito? Who's here now? White cat with the black spots. Mm -hmm. Similar kind of a cow pattern, they call yes. it. It was a cow pattern cat. This cat was called Violet. And I noticed one day that Violet's white fur wasn't white, it was yellow. And it felt like straw. And I thought to myself, here I've been feeding this poor cat dry food every day for the last month. Which I understand most people do. But talk about being unconscious. 
for 20 years I've been telling humans, don't eat dry food. Mm -hmm. And here I'm giving this poor cat dry food. I realized that, I threw the dry food away, started giving him only wet food. Within a month, his, pure, his, his fur was pure white and soft as could be. It completely changed. Okay? Eating dry food is going to have the same effect on every species. So, how many of you own a dehydrator? Anyone? No one owns a dehydrator? Food dehydrator? Good. Don't get one. Okay? Now, if you have one, kill it before it kills you. Okay? Most people have ovens. You want to avoid dry food. Dry food, is that good for you? No, uh -huh. it's not. It's sucking the water out of your body. Water is life. Nothing happens without water. Dry fasting, good idea? No, it's sucking the water out of your body. It's dehydrating you. This isn't a good idea. You'll stop having symptoms because as you become more dehydrated, your body can't do anything it needs to do. So people feel better temporarily, but it's not a good thing, okay? Okay, your body needs water. People feel, wow, now if you drink water, you feel worse. Yeah, you will. Like it happens here, if you drink more, you'll feel worse because your body's actually able to do the detoxification <coughs> it needs to do. But it's not gonna happen if there's not enough water present. Okay, can everyone see that? Right? So, this is why when you're done here, you'll be eating high water content food only. During your feeding, for most of you, if you're, if you're fasting long enough, like 35 days, your feeding period's long enough, you'll start to be able to eat bananas. We won't give bananas to most of you during your feeding because they don't have, they're not contributing any water to your system. And most of you need to get hydrated. They're not gonna help you. Okay, we wanna give you things that are gonna help you do that. And my recommendation to you when you leave here is you continue to focus on things that are high in water. Now, once your body's hydrated, it's okay to occasionally eat something that's lower in water content. But when we do events here, like, um, you know, retreats. We did a retreat some years back and I prepared the food. It was a small event. We had maybe eight or ten participants. And so breakfast and lunch were very simple meals. Breakfast was melon, papaya, just cut up in pieces. I, didn't, I don't eat breakfast. I didn't eat with them. Lunch I would eat with them and it would be, um, or maybe I didn't eat with them, but, but you know, we would give them a couple more options of fruit but it was still fairly simple and high water content. Every night for dinner, there was a prepared meal. Might have been pasta, you know, zucchini or a cucumber pasta with a sauce, a dessert. There was usually two or three courses with a dessert, okay? And every night, there were nuts or seeds, which are usually dry. There might have been some dried fruit, including sun-dried tomatoes. Every night, I had dinner. I made the dinner. I ate dinner with them every night. At the end of the week, my hydration was down three points. From one week of eating one meal a day that contained one or two dry ingredients, everything else I was consuming was high in water. Most people are living on dry food. You will never be able to drink enough water to make up for that. Is everyone really clear about this? Yes. Okay, and, and how this affects you is unbelievable. The difference is, is huge. It's, it's maybe not the same as it was, but when I was, when I was in my 30s, I volunteered at a local organic co-op. And I worked in the produce section. The other volunteers, you, you, the idea was you had to rotate through. They trained you in all of their, there was produce, they had meat, they had dairy, they had uh, supplements, 
and I think they had like you know package stuff, pack package products, and those were the sections of the of the market, and they trained you how to work in each of them, and I said I'd I'd like to volunteer, but I'm only willing to work in produce. I don't want to have anything to do with any of that crap, because there's none of that stuff I'm interested in consuming, right? And so they said okay, I worked only in produce. This would happen at least once a week whenever I was working. Usually a woman would say to me, oh my God, your skin is amazing. What do you do? What do you put on it? And I would say, water. Because <laughs> that's it, no soap, no cream, no lotion, never anything like that, okay? That was, that was almost 25, 30 years ago. I've aged a little bit since then. Even now, you know, far fewer wrinkles than most people my age who are this lean. Because usually the leaner you are, the more you see the wrinkles. Right? Why is that? What's happening? What differentiates someone who's got wrinkles from someone who's not, doesn't have wrinkles? Hydration. Hydration, yeah. The, the primary reason for wrinkles, in my opinion, what I've seen actually, is long-term chronic dehydration. Your skin loses elasticity, and that happens for a simple reason. With you guys, the average we measure here is about 15% dehydrated. Right? Anyone far off from there? Most of you are in that range. Some of you are worse, some of you are a little better. Most of you are around 15%. If every single day of your life, your body is 15% dehydrated, that is to say, there's 15% less water available to your system than your body wants. What is it going to do? Do you think you've got 15% less blood? I don't think so. My guess is your body is intelligent enough to know that blood's a pretty high priority. So it's probably going to take water from less critical places to ensure that your blood your heart, your lungs, your liver, your kidneys, your brain, your pancreas, your thyroid have the water they need. Your vital organs and systems have what they need. But that's at the expense of all the stuff that's not vital. What's not vital? Your eyes. Yeah. Anyone see Stevie Wonder's new piano? Have you seen it? No? Neither has he. <laughs> okay never seen anything in his entire life and he's still alive how old is he 65 70 you don't have to see to be able to survive it's a lot easier to survive if you can see but if your body has to choose between survival and sight it's going to choose survival what happens as people age they tend to lose vision don't they Anyone know what the number one cause of age-related vision loss is? No. Number one cause of age-related vision loss. It's called macular degeneration. Mm -hmm. Yeah. The macula degenerates. What that means is your eye is deforming. And I believe the reason why is very simple. Your eye is a ball of jelly. It's something like 96, 97 percent, guess what? Water. water. And the body's looking for places to take water from. Mm. What else tends to degenerate as we age? The skin. Fine. Skin, we have already mentioned. Okay, skin gets wrinkled for the same reason. What else? Fine. Spine. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, when, when we, the first time we put you guys on the scale, when we've got someone who's over a certain age, usually over 60, and we say, how tall are you? They say something like, well, I used to be, because most people over a certain age have shrunk. Mm -hmm. Sometimes quite a bit. Yeah. There, there are people who lose three inches or more. Why do you think that's happening? What's going on there? Taking water from the spine. Taking water from the spine, where exactly? The discs, which are there to cushion the vertebra, are essentially little bags of water. It's a little reservoir, and your body says, I, I need water to survive. I'm going to take some of that. What else degenerates as we age? Hearing. Say again? Hearing. Hearing? Okay, sometimes. 
I'm not sure what's going on there. Yeah? Bones. Bones? That's a little different. Um, osteoporosis is an issue, but it's a different issue. It's not about hydration. We'll, we'll talk about that another time. What else, though? Not everyone gets osteoporosis. Most people do, but not everyone does. What's something that happens to almost everyone if they live long enough? Hair? Yeah, again, as far as I know, it has nothing to do with hydration. How about joints? Arthritis? Mm -hmm. Pretty common, isn't it? Yes. What's going on there, anyone know? Look at the, the hip. You've got a ball and socket joint. Here's the hip, here's the leg. You've got this incredible range of motion. It's a ball and a socket. What allows bone to move against bone? Water. Without tremendous pain. Cartilage. Cartilage and synovial fluid. Synovial fluid is 99 point something percent water. Cartilage, 98 percent water. Okay? Why, why do so many people have to have their hips replaced? My sister, you're younger than me, just had a knee replaced. And we'll have the other one replaced as soon as she's fully recovered. Why? What's happened? What's, what's happened is the cartilage and synovial fluid, the cartilage dries up as the body becomes dehydrated and then it becomes fragile and starts to, to disintegrate. People get to the point where there's no cartilage left. Okay, their body's not making any synovial fluid. Now, instead of having something that easily glides, right? I mean, it, all these incredible joints, they move easily when it's hydrated. But people, there are a lot of people like they can barely move because it's not hydrated, okay? The body's taking the water from these things on purpose because that's a low priority compared to keeping the heart beating, making sure the brain can function, that the pancreas can do its job. Can everyone see that? Yeah. Yes. Okay, your intelligent body knows what it's doing. But notice that your body didn't make the choices that dehydrated it. You did. Okay? Can your cartilage come back? Or yeah. Slow your fluid too? Mm -hmm. Well, we've, we've had people who've... I had a woman come in here once. She was supposed to have both her hips replaced. A friend of hers suggested she contact me. She came and fasted 30 days. She was 56, I think. Fasted 30 days. When she arrived, they said she had no cartilage in her hips. They didn't know how she could stand up low, long walk. She was still walking, but she was in incredible pain all the time. Must have had a very high threshold for pain. By the time she left, she was walking with no pain. No pain. Now, I, I can't say, well, the cartilage all regenerated because we'd have no way of seeing that yeah. here. But she had no pain. You know what? She didn't care. She didn't care what had happened. All she cared about was that she could walk without pain. Yeah, there's no reason your body can't regenerate its tissue. It does it all the time. I mean, medicine says you can't regenerate the cartilage. But not if you use medicine, you can't. <laughs> not if you listen to your doctor. How are you going to regenerate anything? Your body's toxic and dehydrated and more toxic and more dehydrated as a result of using medicine. That's not going to help you. Fish oil. <laughs> okay? But give your body the chance to clean out the garbage and then eat properly, what happens? You get hydrated. Think about the impacts of that. Again, raise your hand if you're a mother. Okay. Was, did anybody here deliver a baby without drugs? You had no... No spinal, nothing. How about without an episiotomy? No episiotomy. Okay. Everybody else, yes. Drugs or episiotomy or both. Okay. So some of the guys may not know this, but women are typically given drugs so that they're, they're in less pain. And there's usually an episiotomy. An episiotomy is where they cut from the vagina towards the anus to open, to open up the, the opening. Ouch. This is this is typical now. Childbirth. This is typical childbirth. Okay? But but how come? I don't know how many there's 25 million animal species. They're not all live bearers. We give live birth 
They may lay eggs and do other things, but how, how come no other live bear needs a knife, a scalpel, to be able to let their baby come out? Vaginas are hydrated? Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Think about the difference. Sometimes they're smaller, sometimes they're bigger, depending on the animal. The point is that when your tissue is hydrated, it's flexible. So most of the women I know, most of my clients I know, who've given birth after getting their body clean and hydrated, which a lot of clients have done, a lot of women have said, you know what, I want to get pregnant, I want to get my body as clean as possible first. They have easy births, a lot less pain. They also use their, their heads. So if, you're, if your baby is delivered in a hospital, chances are good, you're lying on your back with your feet up in the air. <coughs> because that's, that makes it convenient for the doctor, right? But if you're in nature, you'd be squatting, yeah. letting gravity help you, not fighting against it, mm -hmm. okay? And then if your tissue was, was hydrated, and therefore much more flexible, it would be a lot easier, okay? What do you think, who do you think is more likely to injure themselves? An athlete whose tissues, muscles are hydrated or one who's dehydrated? You're much more likely to injure yourself if you're dehydrated, okay? Again, your tissues are much more inflexible if you're dehydrated, that's what happens. Everything is affected, everything changes. Years ago, the first time I spoke in Amsterdam, I think I mentioned I met my godson's father at that first lecture. My godson is now, I should remember, I think he's, he's 18 or 19. This is 18 or 19 years ago. I spoke in Amsterdam. I think he's 18 and a half. I think it was 18 years ago this past summer. And I stayed with a couple. He was of East Indian descent, and she was Dutch. And the next morning, he was teaching a yoga class. He was in his 60s, and he'd been practicing yoga every day since he was a child growing up in India. And he was a yoga teacher. And we went to his yoga class together, and we were all surprised that I could do things he couldn't do. Okay? I was around 40. He was quite a bit older than me. Now. I'd been practicing yoga. I'd pra in fact, at that point in my life, I practiced yoga religiously. Christmas, Easter, Halloween. <laughs> Three, four times a year, that's it. And yet I stayed flexible. I still am. Without having to work at it. How? My tissue's hydrated. Okay, it makes a huge difference. In December, it'll be two years ago, we were closed at the time. It was shortly before we opened. I got an email from a woman who said, I'm visiting Costa Rica, I'm a big fan of yours. Uh, I'm wondering if I can come visit. And I said, sure. And we made a date, and I told her to come at lunchtime one day. And she came in, and when she arrived, I thought, oh, what a nice little old lady. I, I looked at her, and I, I guessed that she was 75. She had tons of wrinkles on her face. She had on a, a, like an open top like yours, Sabrina. You could see the skin here sort of sagging around her chest, sagging on her arms and legs, right? And we sit down to eat. We're gonna, we cut up a big watermelon. We're going to share this watermelon for lunch. And she says, can I have a bowl? She had a plate. I was like, OK, what for? She said, well, I don't swallow the fiber. I just swallowed the juice and spit out the fiber. I said, really, why? She said, well, honestly, I can't really swallow anything solid anymore. She said, I think it's because I'm so well hydrated. <laughs> I'm going, you know, there, there's some bass backwards logic, <laughs> right? And I said, I, I don't really think that's what's going on, right? And then it comes out in conversation, that, and I don't remember now if she was a month older or a month younger. <laughs> than me, a month older or a month younger than me.
okay? And yet her skin is like, you know, sagging and wrinkles. And, and I said to her, I said, you know, she, she told me this, and I said, you know, you said because you're so well hydrated, I said, you know, we're, we're the same age. I mean, the wrinkles, the wrinkles are telling us that you're dehydrated. She said, no, no, I'm not dehydrated. She said, I've been living on high water content fruit for 32 years. That's all I eat. I said, it's not enough. If you don't fast long enough and properly, you're dehydrated. She said, no, I, I don't think so. I said, no, if you'd like, when we're done, I, I'll take your vital signs. So we took, I took her vital signs. Her spread said, uh-oh, not, you know, she didn't get enough water in the previous 24 hours. And I said, can we put you on the scale? You want to take a look and see what you're, we can actually look at your hydration. She said, okay. She, she was, it wasn't terrible, but it wasn't as good as average. It was worse than the average person. She'd been 32 years living on high water content fruit. Okay? You're not going to get hydrated until you clean the stuff out. Now, you guys are doing that. Right? You've, you've got to fast long enough and properly getting enough water to get the old material out, or you're never going to get hydrated. It's not going to happen. So we see people here sometimes who have been 20, 15, 20 years or more living on this diet. They still come and dehydrate. Some, if, if they're like her and not drinking enough water, they're often more dehydrated than the average person. It's not unusual to have a fruitarian be the most dehydrated person here. If they're one of those fruitarians who says, well, I don't need to drink water because I get it for my food. That happens all the time. It doesn't work. You have to get your body clean. So coming back to all the signs of aging, we've had clients, many of them, who lose their wrinkles. They regain the elasticity in their skin and their face. And it's not because they're using collagen creams or it's all that stuff that people say. It's just hydration. That's all the changes. We see people regain lost height. And we've had a lot of people eliminate their arthritis, as well as heal macular degeneration. Each of these things, each of them changes if people are willing to do what they need to do. Okay, so, you know, it's completely clear. We were running through the fields, you had flowers in your hand. We were all chasing phantoms. Maybe you would hold them still and I grab them. Yeah, well, if you're scared of the dark.